Hi friends, Miles here with another tutorial and this time I want to pay more attention to the electron sequencer. Because in the electronic music world the electron sequencer has kind of like become a little bit of a trademark and I've also touched on the sequencer how much I like it in one of my recent uh, Digitone reviews that I uh, linked you somewhere up here and that you can check out. And I really like the sequencer and want to show you today how you can use it in your own music. By the way, I'm showing this on the Digitone and the Digitact, but I think you can also use some of these tips on other Electron gear, like for example the Analog 4. And it might also be helpful for some gear that is uh, not Electron related, but has a sequencer as well. That being said, let's get right to the five tips for the Electron sequencer. Tip number one is programming polyrhythms. In my jams, I really like to have triplets playing on top of quarter notes, which is actually really easy to set up in the sequencer. So for this example, I pulled up a jam that I'm currently working on. And you can, um, let me quickly uh, mute the bass track. You can see here in the kick drum track that it's basically just playing um, four on the floor. Um, so nothing really special about that. But now if I'm changing to the um, to the bass track, which is over here on the Digitone, um, you can see that there are um, polyrhythmic hits, which sound like this. And all together, it now sounds like this. And um, the thing is that here, my kick is playing regular four on the floor beat to build the foundation and um, the very easy trick is to then just put uh, the bass hit on every third note to create the polyrhythm. So you can see here, I started on trick number three and then I just put it down on every third note here, here, here and here. Don't get disturbed by this one. This is just a step playing in between to add even more rhythmic details. But here it continues. Just every third step, same goes for this page and then same for that page. And um, yeah, this way it's very easy to create interesting rhythms and um, add groove to the jam, like you can hear right now. And um, the fun thing is here that you can basically decide if you want to start directly on the first step or on step number two or three. You can see in this jam, I started on uh, step number three, but you can also um, start um, to lay down your base uh, tricks on step number one and then continue from here. So your next step then would be the number four, then the number seven, then the number 10 and so on. So um, yeah, basically pretty easy and you can um, experiment with that around. Just try different start points and see what fits the groove of the jam better. Now tip number two is creating polyrhythms on hi-hat tracks. For this we will be looking at track number three here on, um, on the Digitact. And uh, in this jam, I put kind of like regular eighth notes down, which you can see here. Um, but uh, all these have a very short um, decay time that you can uh, see here. But um, the interesting thing now is that um, on every um, third step, basically, like um, you can see here, if you compare it to the um, to the bass track, it are actually the same um, the same steps. I um, you can see here, I made the decay time a little longer um, just to uh, create groove within uh, the hi-hat track. It, uh, then I let it play, it sounds like this. And for example, now if I let it play together with the bass track, it sounds like this. Which is really nice because it's of, uh, it of course supports the rhythm of the bass track. And um, now when we also use for example the kick and the snare together, then we have this. Which I found super nice and adds a lot of rhythmic interest and it's very easy to set up. And this can of course be used on other percussive tracks as well, but I found it especially useful on the hi-hat track, which is great for that. Tip number three is to make sounds play one octave higher in fill mode. I like to pitch my sounds up one octave to create excitement and tension in the jam. 
And this can also be done very easy in the sequencer. In this example here, which is by the way from one of my uh, recent uh, techno jams here on the channel, which I linked up somewhere here. And um, in this jam, I just copied the sounds over to answer kind of like the regular plugs one octave higher by um, setting the root note of these tricks here um, one octave higher. So basically when I just uh, take this step here, you can see the root note is G6, but this one here is uh, G7. And you can also see that it only plays in um, in fill mode. And I then did the exact same thing on uh, track number three here on the Digitone. This is also G6 and this is uh, G7. And what happens then is that the sound, just when I regularly play it, it sounds like this. But now, when I enter fill mode, you can hear it now. And um, yeah, when you then you can also put it in the context of the jam. Um, I like to do this to create kind of like a transition. So this is the regular jam playing. And if I now want to make a uh, transition in the second half of the pattern, I can just do it like this. You could hear the higher sounds in uh, this example and uh, playing sounds one octave higher can like really add uh, more drive and build up tension which i really like um, works of course also the other way around when playing the sounds one octave lower to reduce a little bit of the tension tip number four is to turn your sounds into risers in the sequencer when I do transitions, I love to turn my longer lead sounds into risers and it's actually not too hard to set this up uh, with the electron sequencer. So on um, the Digitones track number one here, I have my bass sound playing, which um, usually sounds like this. But with the riser, it then sounds like this. Very cool sound effect and um, both sounds are set up in a way that the first sound doesn't play in fill mode. Like you can see here, this is playing like in fill mode reverse, so it doesn't play in fill mode. And this one is actually playing in fill mode and I moved it all the way to the left. So when I'm in fill mode, this trick is basically replacing um, this one here so uh, that I can use it for the transition. And basically all the magic happens on uh, the LFO page. If we go over here, you can see in the regular settings there are no LFOs applied. Um, and um, yeah, you can, by the way, also see that uh, this is already uh, the new layout of the LFOs after the latest firmware update, which makes now the Digitax LFO uh, exactly the same like uh, the Digitones LFO, which is for me a big thing. So big shout out to Electron. Great job on this update. But um, yeah, back to the LFOs here. So when I hit down or when I uh, press this button, you can see that uh, there's a lot of um, stuff going on. And basically it's our, uh, these are two modula modulations at once. The first one is uh, the pitch modulation and then we have the filter frequency modulation. And um, the uh, pitch riser uh, lets the sound basically rise two octaves up. So you can see here that the depth is set to 24 and then this is set to eight and ramp mode, of course, to have the LFO going up. And this exactly makes the sound um, in two bars, which it basically is, uh, rise up by um, two octaves, which is uh, very helpful. So you just end up on the same um, sound or the same note that you started with. And this is then supported by um, the filter frequency. So what happens here is that over time, and this is why this fades in, um, you have basically um, kind of like a very fast uh, rhythmic wobble effect on uh, the filter, which fades in and then sounds like this. You can also hear that it um, that it gets a lot of um, yeah that it gets more intense over time, and um, yeah this makes this um, this movement very special. And then you can also hear that uh, for this transition, I added more chorus and more delay to the sound, and um, one, um, sorry, that's the wrong track. One other interesting thing is that I did the same thing here on track number four on the lead sound, which is also a longer sound. 
and it has the same um, same basically the same LFO settings to it. I just copied them over and now if I use it in the context of the gem this is just the regular one and now I start the transition can already queue up the next pattern and now it comes Yeah, I really love this effect and I think it adds a lot of movement to the jam and a lot of drive and it's it's a super nice way to um, to make risers and make the rise really impactful when all the sounds are going up. Super nice effect. And the last tip, tip number five, is to create interesting percussive progressions. In this jam right here, I have a very nice snare sound, which sounds like this and which I can make even more interesting in um, the sequencer if we are looking what's going on here. So I have uh, several steps that build towards the normal snare sound, getting louder in, um, in amp volume, which you can see here. And... Um, I have also uh, different, um, that you can see here on this page, I have different sample um, start points um, set up. And uh, the normal snare then additionally has a lot of delay on it, which you can see here. And um, yeah, this makes it just sound uh, or makes it play very long afterwards in the stereo field because it's a um, it's a ping, uh, ping pong delay that you can see here and then all together it sounds like this sorry just wanted to play you the, the snare sound for now and then in the second half of the snare you've already heard it it's um, also the sample is um, is pitched down a lot more. So it's basically um, a different sound to add even more interest, all just uh, within um, the sequencer. And in the whole jam context, I already <laughs> spoiled it a little bit, it then sounds like this. just adds a very very nice groove to the um, to the overall jam and yeah I found that experimenting around with tricks like this can make percussive tracks very interesting and more diverse and definitely um, yeah definitely level up uh, the jams and yeah that wraps up my five tips that I like to use when I'm using the electron sequencer in my music if you have some additional tips, uh, please feel free to share them in the comments. I would love to read them. And also, if you want to check out some of my music, I've linked you a playlist to all of my gems down in the video description where you can check it out. That being said, I really appreciate you guys and thanks for watching this video. Thanks for all your support. And yeah, wishing you a great day, great time, stay safe and see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>